Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here and today we're looking at all the classics armors in patch 13 to see how they stack up and which are the best to get. I also stream live on Twitch and keep my schedule up to date on Twitter so come over to ask any questions in real time. So patch 13 didn't give us any new classics armors but the various stat changes have reshuffled the priority a little bit. There are 7 classics armors overall and I've listed them here in order of effective durability. If you're unsure about the concept of effective durability I now have a dedicated video for armor mechanics that explains everything that you could want to know which you can watch first and come back afterwards. At the top of the list we have the Zabralo with 240 effective durability and the Tasmanian Tiger SK rig at the bottom with only 50. This makes class 6 the most differentiated when it comes to the range of protection depending on what you choose. One of the biggest problems with the class 6 category though is that we can only access 4 of the armors out of the list. This is because the hex grid barter was removed quite a while ago now so only spawns on higher tier AI occasionally as well as in stashes and the hideout scav case rarely. The same goes for the Zhuk 6A making neither of these a consistent use. The Tegilla rig is achievable through killing Tegilla on factory but also isn't purchasable anywhere else. Of the remaining 4 armors, interestingly the most protective, the Zabralo, is on the traders earlier than all of the others. It can be bartered with Mechanic 3 for 2 phased array elements and 5 relays for about 300k, but as this can be done at a minimum of level 30, you don't need to wait until Ragman 4 to get it like the rest of them. The NFM Thor as the second most protective armor in the game has seen some buffs to durability this wipe too, alongside the movement penalty reduction and is the only class 6 armor that is purchasable for cash. Unfortunately, at 420,000 rubles from Ragman 4, this is usually more expensive than the Zabralo, so probably not worth bothering with. Personally, I think this should be about 300k instead, but at this price, I don't think it's worth using, especially considering the debuffs from this are only slightly smaller. 3% more movement speed, 2% faster turn rate, and 3% more ergo, along with 2 kilograms lighter, isn't enough to swing the needle, as these are still large numbers to consider. If you can manage with minus 14% move speed, then minus 17% is probably also fine in return for a cheaper price and one third more durability. Both the Zabralo and the Thor give you arms protection, which is normally considered bad, but because of the extreme durability of both of these armors, I think this is the one place where you can consider it and it can actually be good. Next we have the Slick, which is often regarded as the meta class 6 because of low debuffs, high protection and thorax only. Although thorax only protection can be dangerous against shotguns and other flesh damage weapons, the benefit fit of stomach hits not removing durability from the chest can be an advantage. This is especially true if you are playing against conventional PMCs using min-max PvP cartridges such as M855A1 and 762BP. After the buffs that we've seen this wipe, this now only has a minus 5% move speed with turn and ergo penalties basically non-existent, however it was made heavier at some point in time to 9.7 kilos, so it's not the lightest of all the armors. Economically too, the slick is extremely expensive. The Ragman 4 barter requires 3 trooper armors which are hard to find under 100k as well as 6 Kajura and 6 Aramid totaling somewhere around 470 to 500,000 rubles. I do often see people in this situation saying well I can craft the Kadura myself as well as the Aramid so it doesn't cost as much as using the market but this is missing the point as those find in raid craft outputs could have been sold and the money could have been used to buy something else it doesn't actually make any difference. More simply put for argument's sake if Kadura sold for 1 million rubles on the flea market you wouldn't use them for the slick barter, you'd sell them and you'd buy a different piece of armor instead. It becomes obvious when the number is big, but this reasoning is just as valid with lower prices. Other than the weight and the inaccessibility, the hex grid is almost identical to the slick, which is very similar to the Tegilla rig as well in terms of protection. These are all roughly on par for both durability and debuffs. As a rig though, we get some storage space with the Tegilla, although it's on the smaller side with 6 2x1s. Despite being the second worst from a durability perspective, the Zhuk 6A is actually a decent armor. The protection is not that much lower than a slick, hex or a Tegilla, again with similar debuffs, but it's the only class 6 vest that comes with stomach but without arms protection. It's unfortunate that there isn't a more consistent way to get it as it repairs terribly given the ceramic material type, so even if you do manage to find one, it will probably only last a couple of raids at most as it takes damage. The least protective class 6 is the newest in the list, the Tasmanian Tiger SK. 
This can be thought of a bit like the Corund of class 6, it will protect you very well until it suddenly doesn't. As always, it protects from the very first hit just as well as any of the other armors in the same class, but with 50 effective durability this gets eroded extremely quickly, especially against higher tier ammo. One thing to bear in mind is that 50 effective durability here at class 6 isn't equal to 50 at class 5 or class 4, and it's in fact a lot better because the armor damage from bullets is lower against higher classes, so that effective durability ends up going further. That said, it is still pretty low, but depending on what you want to use it for, this can be enough. While it's not the best at close range slugging matches, its low debuffs and low weight can allow you to stay below the overweight threshold, which is perfect for shoot and scoot sniping and DMR playstyles. With the cost being so low at around 130k due to the strange stuffed toys barter that you have to do for it with Ragman 4, it is certainly a good choice if you were going to wear something like a Corund instead and you have access to it on the trader. For a tiny bit of extra money, this is a solid upgrade on the budget class 5 armors. To put it in context, against 762 BP, you can survive 3 Thorax shots shots two thirds of the time. After shot 2, the armor is practically useless, but because the blunt damage is low enough, shot 3 still won't kill you as the total stays under 85 HP. This is a pretty big deal in general, as 762 BP has a decent chance of two-shotting class 5 armors, ranging from 50% of the time versus the Corund and the Gazelle to 35% of the time against the most powerful one, the Redoute T5. It's clear to see that in this case, the value of a cheap class 6 can't be underestimated. So next up, go and check out my deep dive on the Zabralo, where I showcase it in some raids and why I think it could be the meta this patch. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.